our parallel session, let me remind the participants to mute your microphone to prevent any disturbance throughout the session. You may leave your camera on and I highly encourage the participants to relay your concerns and questions for the panelists in the chat box for the question and answer session at the end of the session. First of all, before we pre proceed, let me briefly introduce you to the panelists for today, Ms. Latifa Koya. Ms. Latifa Koya served as Chief Commissioner of the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commissioner from 4th June 2019 until 9 March 2020. She is currently a partner at Mrs. Dime and Gumni, a leading public interest law firm in Malaysia. She was called to the Malaysian Bar in, 20, in 2001 and has been actively involved in numerous public interests and human rights cases and initiatives. She co-founded Lawyers for Liberty in 2011 and is currently one of its advisors. She was previously involved in numerous initiatives, including the Bar Council's Legal Aid Center, Refugees and Migrants Clinic, Immigration Law Reform Committee, Suara Rakyat Malaysia, and Gerakan Mansokan ISA. So how are you today, Ms. Latifa? Hi, I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Glad to hear so, Ms. Latifa. So for today's session, Ms. Latifa will enlighten us about how the judiciary has been affected by the changes brought during this pandemic situation, and what has the judiciary done in addition to that, she will also share her insight on what would happen to the future of judiciary in where the post-pandemic situation has ended. Thus, let us no wait anymore and hear from Ms. Latifa directly about this topic. Thank you, Penny. And hi, everyone. Um, as you can see, um, we, are, we were supposed to start at 10.40, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, despite that, uh, it took us an hour to get uh, on the screen and start off. Um, so this is, uh, this is what you can imagine. Uh, it's not, that's not only happening uh, in conferences or in meetings in corporate offices and stuff like that, but also in a, in a courtroom. Um, and you, if it is just between us, uh, that is something we can fix. We can try to, you know, understand the whole digital world and online, uh, uh, you know, pandemic situation. But when it comes to a trial, when it comes to a courtroom situation, uh, it is more than that. Uh, it's that new normal that we have to deal with, we have to understand, and how is it going to affect uh, the justice, uh, the justice system. Uh, you know, um, I don't know how many of you have actually uh, had the opportunity to go to court uh, prior to uh, the COVID situation. And as, as we speak now, how many of you had the opportunity to witness uh, a courtroom session uh, post pandemic or not even post, we are in that situation right now. It is difficult. Um, you know, to, to adjust, obviously, um, you know, oh, e even the last uh, few weeks when we are dealing with the court situation online, uh, you actually drop a few notch of the formalities. Uh, you hear the judge speaking and then, um, you know, suddenly the judge will ask, uh, you know, the connections drop and then the judge will ask, can you hear me? And then some of the lawyers would have to say, uh, my lord, not clearly. And there's a level of um, informality that, that, that seeps through the whole process. While that seems to be fine, because sometimes courtroom can be, you know, very strict, uh, very formal, very somber. Uh, and because of this whole online situation, things may be less formal, the way we communicate, the way we talk. But is that good? Is that good in, in looking at the overall situation of how we deal with a court trial? What happens to the, you know, the solemnity of having someone to take the oath, for example? 
what happens when they have to keep to a certain process, a certain set of rules. How do we deal with that? So far, cases have been still in, uh, in a physical manner, meaning people still have to go to court, uh, does examination in chief, cross-examination, re-examination, conduct full trial uh, in week, not on online uh, uh, mode and only hearings and case managements have been uh, through a virtual hearing. But our concern is this, where's the justice if we were to go online? What happens to processes, for example, when someone is to cross-examine uh, a witness? As you know, for litigation lawyers, what is our strongest weapon for truth? Do you know what is the strongest uh, weapon for, for truth for lawyers? It's what you call the cross-examination. Cross-examination process, the style of cross-examination, the way we conduct cross-examination is the most strongest weapon for us to get to the truth. And can you do that when you're online? Where, will we be able to capture the essence of truth? Is there credibility? Is there integrity in the system? Do we know whether the person who is on the other side uh, is answering on his own accord? Uh, will we be able to uh, you know, monitor uh, if someone is actually referring to their notes? Can we immediately expect a yes or no uh, you know, when we are asking the questions? These things um, you will understand when you see how an actual cross-examination is done, an actual question and answer session is done, and then look at it in the context of an online situation. So all these things has to be considered. So until that happens, um, cases are being postponed because of SOPs, um, you know, uh, because of this MCOs, because of the EMCOs, because of the various um, restrictions that have been placed, of course, in the name of um, our health and safety. And this is where the, we'll have to deal with is justice delayed, justice denied, or do we go back to justice hurried, justice buried? Because there are... Um, people who would say that, you know, if we can restrict each trial to say half an hour, then we can, you know, pack more cases and finish off uh, more trials and that is more productive. But is that all that we look at, um, you know, churning out trials and meeting KPIs without really looking at what happens to the accused, what happens to the plaintiff, did he or she get the justice because we are unable to conduct uh, the trial, uh, gather evidence and make our case as fairly as possible before we get a decision. These are things that we have to uh, take note. And we also need to realize that in, in the case, because of the uh, situation where we have to follow strict SOPs, the public are no longer allowed to enter courtroom. Who are allowed to enter courtroom? In a case of a criminal case, uh, only uh, close families, and that is that too is limited to uh, at most two person. Um, and reporters, journalists are not allowed to enter courtroom. Now, this is another worrying situation because the very essence of justice and the understanding of judiciary in the, in, in, in the new world is when you have public court hearing, okay? So we are no longer uh, uh, conducting secret hearing, secret trials. We've gone past, we are a democratic country, Unlike say, in say communist China, for example, where secret hearings can still continue, or maybe uh, you know, in, in, a, in a country which does not, uh, for example, Saudi Arabia, 
I don't know whether you have been following the recent trials of the murder of uh, uh, Khashoggi, for example, where a trial is conducted and someone has been um, uh, um, you know, convicted and that's it without anyone knowing what happened and uh, whether there, there is truth, whether there's proper evidence that was brought in. So a secret trial is done and then they say the murder case is completed. So we can't do that. In Malaysia, we still have to do public hearing and public trial. But because of the case of, uh, because of the pandemic, the excuse given is that we have to be very careful. We cannot pack the court uh, with uh, people. Uh, and we do not have the technology or system where people can actually access to every single courtroom uh, to hear any cases that they want to. These are the things that, that needs to be uh, you know, taken into uh, consideration. We, we no longer have, uh, you know, during the uh, early times, um, during the Elizabethan time, whenever someone is charged, uh, if that someone is uh, a person who is involved, uh, who is a politician or a very important person, and that person is accused of going against the king, they, they, they bring them to a court, a so-called court, and it's called the Star Chambers. Look up, read up on that. And immediately, um, without any due process, it is done in a secret manner. People are uh, uh, arrested, subjected to a so-called trial, and then they will be sent into the towers and to be hanged, to be punished, to be killed, uh, whatever that they think it's fit uh, you know, uh, to dispose of so-called justice. So, Coming back to the, the current situation, can we actually have fair trial? Can we actually achieve justice in an online manner? Perhaps in the case of a civil court, perhaps in a case of submission, hearing, I think we can, uh, we will have to adjust. But in an actual criminal trial where someone is accused, can we do that? Uh, it would be a very big challenge, uh, especially in Malaysia, where we are talking about, um, you know, our internet system is not uh, up to par, uh, you know, uh, access to uh, online is not up to par, access to justice in itself is not up to par, uh, to achieve a proper justice or uh, to achieve uh, a situation where we can comfortably say that our judiciary and our independence will not be compromised. Uh, I think it's a bit too early to say. Let's hope that this pandemic will soon be over. Somebody will find the vaccine and, and we can get back to uh, the normal uh, court system. Uh, in the meanwhile, I suppose we will have to put up with certain delays. Uh, we have to put up with postponements. We have to put up with the queuing up of, uh, of the cases um, and having to face with all kinds of excuses where our clients are not brought from the prison, where we won't be able to get um, proper instructions from our uh, clients who may have been detained. All these things are to be looked at. So I guess I think um, we can go on and on uh, about how uh, uh, this pandemic uh, situation has affected the court system. Uh, and that's the harsh reality. Uh, but um, I, perhaps I'll, I'll just take questions and then I can see whether you would be able to understand more. Uh, so I, I, I'm, I think I will let uh, the participants ask questions. That would be probably easier. Thank you so much to our panelists for an insightful sharing. Now, if anyone has any question, I'm sure Ms. Latifa will be pleased to answer them. You may unmute yourself or type your questions in the chat box. We could take two or four questions.
Don't be shy, you can ask directly. I hope I didn't speak French to most of you. Uh, hi, Sankal. Okay, my name is Nadia. Okay, I would like to ask about uh, uh, that you have said that uh, we uh, that we cannot dine our online uh, for the online trial, right? So for the CV case, can we done that? Because you said okay, for camera it's hard to be done because we need to cross the nation uh, regarding the, uh, that, that thing, the procedure like that. Okay, so my question is, uh, is it for the CV case? We had done it for the online trial. Oh, is that okay? If I could, uh, if if I actually heard you correctly, is your question asking whether we have uh, conducted a civil trial uh, online? I'm yes. a, uh, uh, on our side, most of us uh, still opt for actual trial, and that option is still there. So we haven't actually uh, conducted a, a civil trial or even a criminal trial uh, online because uh, it is almost um, uh, impractical at this, uh, as it stands right now. No one uh, is ready with that kind of technology uh, on our side, which is both Slango and KL. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Uh, hello. Uh, I have a uh, an question or an idea because uh, you said earlier that the trial conduct is uh, constrained because of the uh, PKPB that uh, constrain people to go to the uh, to have a proper trial. But what if we we change or we transfer the 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 courtroom for a while from federal court in Potrajaya, for example, to uh, out of the uh, red zone a place where uh, where the proper trial can be conducted. So, how uh, is your view regarding that? Well, actually, um, despite the fact that Putrajaya is considered a red zone for the moment, at least until the 9th uh, November, um, Putrajaya Federal Court does not have actual trials. Those are places where you actually do hearing and also, um, you know, uh, appeal hearings and, uh, uh, and submissions. So the actual uh, scene of a courtroom where you have witnesses coming in, sitting in the witness room, a witness stand, all those does not happen in the in federal court or court of appeal. So there's no reason for that to be uh, transferred. What we're talking about is the regular courts, the sessions courts, the magistrates courts, and uh, for example, a murder trial or a, a, a drug case, or a case between two persons, plaintiff and defendant, who is suing each other, uh, and where you have uh, witnesses and uh, and the lawyers standing up to make their case, um, you know, cross examining. So these things, if you can imagine, in a virtual uh, hearing, it will be highly complicated, especially when you are talking about not having the optimum uh, internet system. When all of a sudden, after asking questions. The, the matter goes uh, offline, for example. So the, the, the sting of the question is thrown out. Uh, or perhaps there is someone else in that room together with the witness. How would we know? Can we check? So there is that element of integrity and trust when we are doing a trial because a, a witness cannot be assisted by someone outside. But how do we know? Would we be able to find out those? These are the things that uh, worries and raises concern: whether a trial can be conducted fairly, properly, in a transparent manner on uh, uh, in a virtual world.
Ms. Latifa, I guess from what you have answered, I think it's included those like, for example, the accused might have the ex excuse to say that oh, my internet connection is poor, so I couldn't attend. So as, as one of the excuse to delay their trial, right? Yes, that, that certainly is. Um, either the accused or a prosecution witness uh, and who is asking them to answer the question. Because you see, like I've said before, the biggest weapon for truth for a lawyer is the process of cross-examination. So when we ask a question, we expect an answer. But the judge who watches the process will not only listen to the yes or no or an answer, but actually watches the demeanor of the witness, whether the witness is looking at notes, whether the witness is looking at his lawyer or whether the witness is looking at someone else or whether he's nervous or did he answer in a proper fashion. All these things has to be captured to actually get to the truth. So that is why you will see lawyers who will have many, many styles to scare the witness, to mock the witness, to ask uh, questions in a joking manner, these things will affect the kind of evidence that we are seeking. So every answer that comes out from the mouth of the witness, together with how the demeanor of the witness uh, is, are the ones that will be used by the judge to actually uh, come to a decision. That is why a trial notes of evidence, audio recording are very, very important. But while the man matter is being conducted, can we be very sure that the judge captured those things that we want the judge to capture? So when we ask a question and the client say answered in a fashion which is nervous, can we be sure that the judge actually watched it? Did he actually see it? So these are things are very, very crucial when it comes to, especially in a case uh, which involves the liberty of a person, a person who is being arrested and charged for something uh, uh, which would deprive him if he is convicted. So these are uh, serious matters. So once you young students uh, start going to court, you will see how important it is to have that skills of an advocate and how you ask the question and how you deliver those evidence to the, co to the court and to the judge who is presiding. And if you miss that, then you will uh, probably deny uh, proper justice to, to your client. Good morning, Miss. I would like to ask, um, in light of the news report reporting that there was a suggestion from some lawyers saying that it should not be a blanket postponement of all the trials during the CMCO, and it was suggested that the court can hold trials involving those on bail as long as COVID-19 SOP are strictly followed. So what is your opinion on this? No, I totally agree. A lot of cases where it's pending only because um, they haven't been brought out, matter has not been fixed, uh, and especially those who would have to hear their bail. Because if you don't allow a bail hearing, then your client uh, is put in detention longer than he or she is supposed to be there. Uh, so that is not fair. So of course, there should be exceptions and a stricter SOP to be put in place. But those should be the consideration because as you know, uh, the last few weeks, the increase of um, uh, the COVID cases are said to be in various detentions, uh, detention uh, um, uh, uh, centers. So that includes prison, that includes uh, immigration detention centers. So why is there uh, 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 an increase of COVID there? Because there is an overcrowding of uh, prisons uh, in, in these places. So how do you reduce overcrowding uh, by you know, releasing them on bail, by uh, paroling them, bringing them out, uh, those who, who may have already served an ample amount of sentences, so in order to do that, you still have to go back to court. So if you want to bring someone out to bail, you need to hear the bail uh, process. So these things, I think the court can uh, conduct uh, in an immediate fashion and that should be their focus so that we can avoid overcrowding 
and that in itself will reduce the pandemic uh, danger. Thank you, Miss. Is there any more questions that you guys are curious with? All right, I think. Thank you, Miss Latifa. Thank Great you. questions and answers from both the panelists and our fellow audience. Unfortunately, those are the only times we have today. Thank you everyone for participating. We really do appreciate your interest in this important issue. Also, I would like to thank our panelists. Thank you for your time and sharing. We will be sure to make full use of it and appreciate it so much. Hope to see you all again in the future. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye Miss Latifa. Bye. Thank you. Uh, before that, can we have a photo session together? Uh, yeah. Can we all have a photo session along with the participants? Maybe participant can you open your camera. Wait for a moment, yeah? Okay, uh, everyone's ready? In three, two, one, smile. Okay, another one. Three, two, one, smile. All right, thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.